Hey everybody and welcome to a fiery wild ride with Steve-O. We've got flames to put out, folks. There was an issue between me and Andrew Santino and we dived right into that. And man, is it juicy. What a hilarious guy. Speaking of fire, the guy is on fire. Man, filming big time movies with Zac Efron and John Cena right now. And boy, does he dish up the goods about that. I'm telling you, you guys are gonna love this one. So let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, dun, 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 dun. Andrew Santino. <laughs> yeah, and dude. the conference room goes wild. We made it. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, I've, man. I've uh, reached out to Andrew Santino. Uh, I don't know how many times. Too many. Um, and uh, every time I asked, can, can you do my podcast? I'll bring it to you. It'll be so easy. Um, it was... Uh, a, Man, I got too much going on. Uh, like, and it got to a point where I was so frustrated that I lashed out in the most humiliating way. It was very funny. <laughs> yeah, you should, never heard him. you should put the text up on the. We should make T-shirts uh, of what he like, said to you. Fuck you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and I legitimately was like, "Is this for real?" <laughs> Immediately, as a comic, you're like, "This is a bit." He's doing a bit. <laughs> And I was about to go, fuck you, bro. <laughs> and, then, and I'm like, no, no, he's mad. I could tell. I was like, no, he's I, actually frustrated. No, no, the, I, the, my favorite part about that whole thing is he said, eat shit. Eat shit. No, no, <laughs> eat, eat shit. shit. I know, but I was typing eat so shit. fast, I misspelled eat shit. Your anger restricts you from actually getting the, the diss out. Eat shit. Eat, eat shit. And then you said, yeah, I'm going to go eat shit. <laughs> yeah, I'll go eat and some shit. <laughs> I can feel my face getting red. Um, but he, here's the thing: I've never heard Steve talk like that in my life. That's why funny. when he when he was like, "Dude," and I was like, "Bro, let's let's get out of here. Let's it, go somewhere." It, as is often the case, it had nothing to do with with you. No, yeah, no, I, I knew that. Like I was, uh, <laughs> I've been a comic for 20 years. Like I get it by now. Yeah. When I, when when you when I fight with Bobby, when when I get into it with any friends in our world. I know right away what's really going on. It's some other shit. You're fried. It's a relationship. You're tired. It's uh, family shit. It's dude. It's always everything else. I Burr and I Burr one time. Burr one time and I had a little thing and it wasn't a big deal, but I was bummed. I was like really hurt because I look up to him. I respect him like he's a hero. Oh yeah. And then he something happened. It's no one's business, but it was like it bummed me out. And then a couple days later, he texted me because he's like the greatest dude on earth and was like, I'm sorry, man. I didn't, I don't know why I said that. I don't know why this went this way, but he was like, straight up, it's, you know, it's because of X, Y, Z. And he explained to me like what was going on. I was like, oh, good. I got it. I didn't take it as me. me. Right. I knew some other shit was up. And he was like, that had nothing to do with you. Yeah. But for some reason, you were fucking in the line of fire and you got clipped. And I was like, <laughs> it happened. dude. It's, I let that stuff go so fast, dude. It goes away. It's like. My dad, I grew up in a world of lies and chaos. Of My dad was a drug addict and not a prison who never showed up but said he was going to wow. show up. So I always know about the other side of it where you're like, something else is going on. Yeah, Fortunately, but he, I had But the, you showed up to, for, to, for today for me, dad. You were here for me. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I, I, uh, I came around pretty quickly. And, and No, uh, you did. It was good. And, and, and I acknowledged where I had come up short. Yeah, but did your dad ever tell you to eat shit? <laughs> He would he would I, finish it. He'd say eat shit. I I, uh, I was typing so fast and and I wrote eat s h i y. I I misspelled it and just it, it was already sent. Each <laughs> each shy is kind of a cool. And then he sent it again. Yeah. <laughs> each shy. Oh, I misspelled eat shit twice. Yeah. Yeah. Each shy. Each shy. <laughs> yeah. You should make each shy shirts. Each I shy. wanted to make I, I, a text I, I, bubble that said eat shy, and do like like a, some I sort of drop. Funny. Eat shy. Yeah, but you're here, and we're here, and we it took us to go to Australia. The truth is, <laughs> the truth is, I have been draining myself to a degree I can't even explain. It's been the last three months of my life, four months have been gross. To and it's going to get worse. Credit. It's going to get worse. Can you I talk go, about what you're doing? Yeah, I'm do, Yeah, I can say I'm do, here shooting a movie. It's all over the fucking papers. It was crazy being down in Australia shooting a movie with with Zac Efron, and, because he's so famous. You forgot that, like in America. Fame is whatever. We live in LA. We see famous people. All, it, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, 
It does. Dude, here it's but here it's, it's, it's not here. different. Different. Why? What does he do when he goes out? We can't go out. We have to we have to get private tables everywhere. We have to like when we do go out together, we have to be like it's discreet. It's tough, dude. It's really tough. Yeah. I, it's just so hard. You have to like dude, they're the paparazzi are like everywhere. They find sneaky little ways to find out where the production is shooting all and dude, we're everywhere. We're not in one spot. We're tra we'll travel, you know, 20 kilometers, mate, to go to this fucking place. They'll find a way there. They're always around bothering, sneaking, and it's just, it's it's we, it's creepy, dude. It's creepy. Yeah. Is he hotter in real life or in the movies? He's pretty damn hot. He's pretty no hot, dude. What. He's pretty hot. <laughs> He's pretty hot. And Cena, and then Cena's with us, so John is super famous too, you know? And that's another level of, like, crazy super fame. It's like, it's, it's strange. It's like, who's you, more famous, Cena or Efron when you guys go out? Two totally different worlds. Yeah. Like two, like, like, that's what I think is good about the movies, like pulling from two different fan bases. Cena is like, uh, Cena's bro, more bro, bro famous. And Efron is way more chick famous. Wow. Way more chicks are going to come up and <laughs> guys in the bar aren't going to be like, Zach, Zach. <laughs> but dudes, but dudes, me and, uh, when Cena was here, he's gone. But when he was here, we did my podcast and then we went out and had, um, he was afterwards, I was like, well, let's get you back to your, to your wife. You know, he wanted to go back to the hotel. He was like, you know, dude, I just texted her. Do you want to go get a Guinness? He likes, he like the boy likes his Guinness. And I was like, I'd love to go get a Guinness. And I texted this guy and I said, what's the best place to get a Guinness? And he said, you should go get Guinness at this spot and they have good kangaroo. So me and Cena Wait lit up a, a bunch of Guinnesses and had kangaroo. Wow. It's, dude, it's, it's rad. It's like elk meat. It's super, it's gamey, it's lean, but it's good. Yeah. Wow. You should, dude, have you never had it? I, I only eat seafood. I haven't. Oh, eaten, you don't eat meat at all? Yeah, no, right. I haven't oh. eaten anything but seafood in a long time. Dude, take your ass to go get some kangaroo. I'll eat some kangaroo. It's, it, it honestly, I thought it was going to be, <clears throat> the woman at the bar was like, if you don't like it, we'll, you know, toss it, toss it off the bill. And I was like, yeah, I'll try it. I loved it. Finished it. I was like, this is delicious. It's yeah. so good, dude. I wow. think it's really, if you like gamey stuff, if you can handle it. But he likes his Guinness, and so we had a bunch of those. But he sat at the bar. Nobody really bothered him. Uh, a few people came over. One dickhead came over. You know, like the absolute dickhead move. We all know the move is like, Steve, Steve, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. All right, man. I fucking love you. And then walk. that's it. That's cool. But this guy's on FaceTime with his homie, drunk. And he's like, Fucking John Cena, mate! Fucking John Cena! <laughs> and John politely was like, hey, man, come on, come on, dude. Like, could have been a dick. Like, he could have grabbed his phone and been like, dude, don't, you know, embarrassed him. But he was like, come on, dude, be cool about it, man, will you? And he pulled him aside and was like, I'll do a photo, but, you know, don't do that. And it was like the classiest version of, you know, telling this guy, don't be a fucking idiot mm -hmm. at the bar yeah. and call more attention to me. But he can go out. Uh, Zach can't really go out. <clears throat> I mean, he can, I guess, but I don't know. He chooses it, not to. It's uh... He's get his dick sucked all day. He, that's what he's doing. He's getting his dick sucked. He's got a rotating <laughs> list. Yeah. yeah. Shifts. Everyone's taking shifts. Um, okay. Tap in, tap out. <laughs> now, how long have you been in Australia? You said a month and a half? I got here Janu at the end of January. I don't even remember. And, and um, you... It's now, what is it, March, mid-March or something? It's, it's May. Yeah, June. You banked a bunch of episodes of your podcasts ahead of time. I did as many as I could, and then I did a bunch here. You know, Jimmy Carr came through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Russell Peters was supposed to do it, but he bailed. Russell, eat shit. <laughs> 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 he came and he came and played the uh, he played the John Kane Arena uh, right across the street. You know, like right around the Unbelievable way. Unbelievable the tickets that guy sells. Stupid. That's where we went to go see Dave. Chappelle came and we went to go see him. I texted Donnell and we went to go see his show. Did you see uh, Ed Sheeran? <laughs> I hear, what, what, am I saying that right? Why are you laughing? Ed Sheeran, I just don't picture. You, you don't. You think I would miss an Ed Sheeran show? <laughs> no, no, no. But like he was here with Snoop Dogg in Melbourne. Like Wait, Snoop was here with him. Snoop, Not Ed with Sheeran. Him, here no, 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 dude. No, no, no. No, they were in a photo together in Melbourne, and it seems like every fucking celebrity is staying at this hotel. Well, no, that's, he's 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 he was alone. He was solo. But people from the crew went to go see Ed Sheeran, and then the, and then the other young guy that the other Harry young Styles. Harry Styles was here yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're all in a photo together. Yeah, well, they're all they're all fucking partying. That John Kane Arena, that block of like sports arena, all that stuff. Every show happens there. If it's of that size, there's nowhere else they play in Melbourne besides at that little chunk block. Mm. Kreischer's gonna go there. Wow, where, are, where, where's 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 that... your show tonight? What's okay, it called? I'm not even the sure. the plenary. 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 The plenary. P l e n a r y. Plenary. 
Yeah. Plenary. It, at, it's crazy, yeah. man. It's, it's, it's over double what my previous biggest show of my life was. So sick. That's yeah. so sick. <laughs> yeah. You got to move down here. You can become Arch Barker. You know, you know Arch res- Barker? No. You guys don't know that guy? Arch Barker is a great comic that was on Flight of the Concords. He was like the only non Kiwi that was on Flight of the Concords, if you ever saw that show. And he was, you know, I think he loved it down, down, down here so much. He moved, I think he lives in New Zealand full time now. He was wow. an American comic that did great, but down here he's a god. Yeah, wow. I think I can live down here. Like Hasselhoff in Germany. 100%, dude. That guy, <laughs> like, why leave? Yeah, yeah, I could live here. I've said this multiple times. This city, I could live, I could 100% live here. Yeah. Um, you could, but but you wouldn't. No, I won't. Because you're on fire right now. I could, let, but I won't. Let, let, let's get right down to it here. Yeah, let's do like, it. Like, you are hot right now. Sexy right now. Hotter than... It's than going away, You're red hot, redder than... My hair. Yeah. My face. Yeah. My balls. But, my I mean, ass. It's, uh, it's, it's awesome, man. And um, your, your special, Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. I, I had to text you after I watched the whole thing. I love when I watch somebody's project all the way through to the end yeah. and take a photo of the credits the credit roll yeah. as proof, receipt, that I That's watched it receipt. all the way through. I respect that. And you, uh, I, I, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you, dude. The, the suggestion that if anybody... <laughs> Uh, should ever find that they have inserted uh, a, a little vibrator into their bottom and cannot get it out, that the only rational thing to do is to kill yourself. Kill yourself, yeah. <laughs> and then the little act out of, of walking, walking away. with the, yeah. the, 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 yeah. the vibrator oh. in your tush, dude. It's a scary <laughs> moment in time when you get stuff stuck in your cavity. My buddy used to tell me stories all the time. People would come in with crazy shit. People put, that was a that's a tame story because I didn't want to gross people out. But he was like, my buddy that works in the yard is like the amount of people that put cr- crazy stuff in their butt, yep. and it's it's awful because it rips them to it like can kill you. It rips yeah. your insides. No doubt, you got to be careful what you put in your body, and that is why I'm so happy to tell you guys about Blue Chew because I love putting it in my body. It is a delicious chewable tablet that has the same active ingredient as both Viagra and Cialis, except it only costs a fraction of the price. And when I put it in my body, man, wonderful things happen. I think you know what I'm talking about, and it is very good for my love life. Plus, you can get an entire month's supply of Blue Chew tablets absolutely for free and only pay $5 for shipping if you go to bluechew.com and use the promo code STEVO. That's right. Plus, it's ever so easy when you consult with one of their online medical providers at BlueChew.com to take care of the prescription and get that entire month's supply on its way to you completely for free. You only pay $5 for shipping. And once again, that is at BlueChew.com with the promo code Stevo. Now, let's get back to it. There, there was a, a, a EMTing. There was a person that like put a bottle of wine up his butt, broke, and he couldn't get it out. And so he was like trying to smash it against the wall to like, <laughs> and it cut his whole butthole up. And so like at sex shops, they make uh, bottles of wines with holes cut in the bottom for the air circulation to go through. Oh, that's because smart. people are going to do it anyway. That's so you smart. might as well smart. have a hole smart. in the bottom so you can get it out, and it's not like. Um, that's a very, that's very, that's, let's see, this is sex toys are getting. They're getting sophisticated. They're, they're, they're sophisticated, dude. <laughs> mm-hmm. How come, but how, this, how come, I asked this the other day, dildos always have balls. They always have balls. Dildos always have balls on them. Do they always? I, I'm going to push back on Dildos never have balls that. on them. No, I've seen dildos with I'm balls. I'm going to push back. Okay, but vibrators don't have balls. No. Why not? Um, because. Don't you want vibrating balls? Yes, but that's what a cock ring's for. No, no, no. But if you're using a vibrator, wouldn't it be nice to also have a pair of little little balls that roam around? Dude, this podcast got age restricted a while back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Edit all that out, dude. Edit that out. You know what you're doing, right? Get yourself another iced latte and cut, 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 cut. <laughs> Sitting in a cold, uh, dark room. So the um, the I I noticed that you said because because we we had like kind of scheduled a time to do the podcast and then you were like oops sorry bud got to pull out again i just booked a 
a movie in Australia. This was it. That was like right after the special came out. And I thought, ooh, that special was so good. No. He's got the job offers flowing in. No, no, not true. No. No, I mean, it's that this this came on a weird. I told you the roundabout story of this before we started rolling, but like this kind of was on an accident. But I was, I, I the, you know. This, yeah, I mean, you can t- tell the, yeah. the, 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 you had read the script. Yeah, I read the movie. script. I read the script for Ricky Sinicky like almost a decade ago. And I talked to the directors, Pete Fairley, the Fairley brothers, people that know it did Dumb and Dumber and something about Mary and Shallow Hal and every one of your favorite movies if you're in around your 40s. Um, and Pete had this script and then it got sent around. I read it and I had a meeting with him. Begged him to be in it. I did. I said I would do it for free. I would do anything it took. And that was years ago. And then time passed and they couldn't make it. It got traded to studio to studio. It got rewritten like six, seven times. And then cut to more recently, I ran into Pete again with Larry David at a charity event. And Pete was like, we're going to make that movie. And I was like, are you serious? He's like, we're making that movie. And and Larry David vouched for you. LD, was, va- LD was, was very, LD. the politeness of LD was huge because he didn't have to say shit. He was kind yeah. of on his way through. He could have just been like, oh, hey. But he was, you know, he kind of hyped me up a little bit. And having the Larry David vouches like yeah what else is there really and uh then pete was like trying to work it out and it wasn't going to work for other reasons we weren't going to be able to do it and i got back from paris with stavros and uh theo and andrew schultz which we never belonged in paris in the first place they paid us to go to paris to make jokes at a fashion show it was (laughs) it was the dumbest it was bound to fail but it worked (laughs) and looked great on social dude it was it was rad and uh what's her name uh Cindy Crawford. Holy shit. What I'm crazy. I can't think of her name. This is like drawing such a bad blank. Uh, it was hosted by, um, uh, dude, the most famous runway model of all time. What's her name? Tyra Banks. Tyra Banks, yeah. I don't know why I couldn't do that. I'm like losing my mind. She um, she was so rad and so nice, and I thought she wasn't going to want to be around a bunch of annoying comedians. She was kicking it the whole time. Like You would assume she'd be like, I don't want to hang around these dickheads. But she sat with us, joked with us, laughed. Like, it was super rad. And then afterwards, I was like, we're going to go out and have something to eat. And her partner was with her, and she was like, we're going to go. We're going to go somewhere else. And, and I was like, dude, I bet you they're going to the most, like, bomb-ass place in Paris. Like, the most dope, like, underground, secretive, sexy place. We met back up with her in the lobby later that night. And she's like, we're going to jump on a plane, and we're leaving soon. I was like, oh, okay. Well, it was good to see you. Good to meet you. I was like, where'd you guys end up going to eat? And I'm like bracing for something amazing. McDonald's. She's like, we went to Five Guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really? She's like, yeah, they've got this bomb ass bacon shake. And I was like, that's so rad. Wow. And after a fashion show, she went to Five Guys. Yeah. How was it working on Curb? Curb Wait, was did, the great, probably the, probably the second or third greatest moment of my life in comedy. Did you have a script or was it improv? Does everybody know Curb and you don't have to say Curb your enthusiasm? Of yeah, I, I think everyone, in the everyone, in, the, everyone in our world knows for sure. But uh, Curb was... You know, auditioning was so fun because I was supposed to go in for this role for, uh, uh, there's, if you've seen the episode, the last season was, <clears throat> there's a guy with a dog named Adolf. Yeah. Do, do you remember that episode? Where he's like, why would you name it Adolf? He's like, it's a family name. And, and, <laughs> and Larry, but so they wanted me to do that. So I went in there with like a German accent and it crushed. And then Larry told Allison, who casts the show, who put me in the office, she put me in a bunch of stuff. He, she was like he, he he was like he he doesn't look Aryan dude he has red hair like this we're, we want a guy that looks like hit, a Hitler boy you know like this guy isn't gonna that's not gonna work so I was a little bummed because he, they talked about it like right in the room and then Larry was like I want but I want him in some I want him to do something so they they had this other character they were building the latte Larrys uh, which is the comp- competition for you know if you've seen this show you should watch the show but. And they said they want this like construction worker to help construct this like perfect urinal for Larry. And so Allison gave me the character description and then sent me in the hallway. And she's like, we're going to take some other auditions for the Hitler dog guy. But, you know, do you want to come back later today? And I said, no, just give me like three minutes to read this and I'll come back. So one guy read. I, you know, came back in the room and Larry was like, what are you doing here? And I was like, I'm ready. And she was like, you don't want any more time? I was like, no, I'm good. And then I improv with Larry and I made him break like three times and he was like, get the fuck out of here. And then I knew, I just knew when I got in the car, I knew because he kept laughing in the middle of the thing and then was like, just get, get out of here. And when he kicked me out, I knew I was like, all right, we're good. Yeah, it was rad. But I did some of the beats that I did in the show. Like one of the things I did on that I actually duplicated that I improv in the room that I took to the show was 
J and JB Smooth he saw it was me and was like, oh, oh, what's up, son? And then immediately was like, I'm gonna get in the scene. And he just like got in the scene because we were, you know, doing jokes about having your dick near the urinal. And the one joke that landed in the room that I did was, he was like, how, how is this wall gonna know? And I, and I was like, we'll have a dick detector. And immediately when you walk up to it, it'll detect your penis, size, stature, it'll know how far you need to be from the toilet. And the door will slide up and it'll go, doot, 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 penis detected. <laughs> and Larry broke in the middle of the room, started dying laughing. And he's like, do, do, the, do the noise thing again, do it again. And so I was doing all these different robot sounds for the pisser. And he, I knew on the day, he was like, bring all that shit to the thing. So we did, you know, I don't know, 20 minutes of takes. And then that was my day. I mean, it was lightning fast. It was just like, go, 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 go. And then you're done. You're, it's super quick because they improv, they improv one big scene. Larry goes, no to that. Yes, yes, no, yes, no. And then you do it again. And then he goes, yes to that. No, bring that other thing back. And then one more. And by that, the third take, you really are like whittling it down to almost, it's like writing a good joke. It's like you whittle it right down to it, trim all the fat. Yeah. And he broke a few times, which was huge. Like it was nice to make him laugh, but I was diligently working on not laughing at JB because maybe one of the funniest people I've ever seen live in my entire life. Like he just is so good at that character on that show and making up just chaotic nonsense. You know, like he was talking about how like what side of what side of the pants that your your penis is on dictates what kind of man you are. <laughs> and he went on a whole rant about that. And it, I was it was so funny. It never even made it into the cut. But from that Larry took a piece of that to do something else. That's how they work. Like, they're little comedy magicians. He, like, takes a thing, moves a thing, puts it here, there. But he see, I think he knows every single beat he really wants to end up at, but he lets you find it a little bit on your own. That's crazy. He's, a, he's the greatest comedic producer, performer I've ever worked with live in my life, by did, far. Did Bobby have that same experience? Because I, I didn't realize... Bobby was the Korean bookie on like season three. Yeah, yeah. And they, I mean, was he? I'm saying, sure Bobby was having a panic attack the entire time and yeah. not knowing what to do. But He's, he did. He did good though. No, he did great. He but he'll tell you he did terrible. Like he'll 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 probably complain about it, you know, and be like, "Oh, Larry didn't like me," and he, you know, he's a psycho, dude. He's the craziest yeah. piece of shit I've ever known, <laughs> and I hate his guts more than anything. And he's my best friend, and I hate him. And you guys have shows coming up. Eat shy, Bobby. Yeah, <laughs> we have 35 cities. Go to badfriendspod.com. Steve's been on the show, and that show was so crazy when you came on. You guys showed me your butthole, and it was amazing. It was fucking rad, dude. Ooh, you yeah. asked for it. Both buttholes? Both, both of them. They both have beautiful buttholes. Beautiful butts. Clean, clean, clean. Clean pipe, yeah. dude. Yeah. Keep it clean. Hey, how did that episode perform? Killed. What do you mean? It did phenomenal. The oh, fans great. loved that shit. We went Because you went off in these tangents and these wild worlds. You were on one, dude. You were like, because you had been editing for like a full day straight. And yeah. so you were, when you came in, you were like, all right, dude, we got to fucking do this, man. You were like, <laughs> you were, it's like you were looking off into the horizon the whole time, but we let you fly and it was super fun. And, but me and him are taking the show on the road. We're doing like kind of an interactive showcase. We're not doing a sit down pod. We do both do stand up. We have Jetski Johnson, Jesse Johnson open the show. Who's so rad. Mm -hmm. We're going to have other guest star comedians on the road in different cities that we're at. And then we're going to do a bunch of bits from the show pre-recorded videos that you guys can see, sketches, and then bits that involve the audience, a ton of stuff that involves the audience. It's more like a give back of like, be a part of this show that you've been supporting for four years. Now look at what we've all made together type of thing. How so, many cities? 33 right now, I think. I think it's gonna get up to maybe 40 when it's done because the fans are, it's so funny, dude. You post dates and you're like, hey, look at all these places I'm going. And people are like, why aren't you coming here, man? Uh -huh. Yeah. And you're like, sorry, man. Sorry, we're figuring it out. Like this isn't, you know, we didn't avoid you on purpose. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I, I, I've been on my bucket list tour for a long time. Oh, yeah. and, and so I'm always posting new dates. And when I post new dates, every one of those comments is about a place I've already been. You already went, yeah. That's so annoying. <laughs> That's so annoying. That pisses me. When are you coming to Baltimore? It's like, we left Baltimore yesterday. <laughs> that happens all, all the time. All the time, dude. It, it, it's, but also when somebody goes, huge fan, this is my biggest pet peeve, huge fan, what are you doing in town? I'm like, how big of a fan can you be? If right. you don't know why I'm here today. Or Steve's is, uh, dude, I'm such a huge fan, can I buy you a drink? It's like, yeah. he's been sober for you, 15 years. Yeah. yeah, no, no. Oh, yeah, by the way, is that now? It is, that? it is actually. Today? Right in, in America, it's 15 years right now. Dude, congrats. Dude, thank you so that much. That is so man. cool. I read it online this morning, and I thought, I wonder if this was an old post. I didn't look at the date, but I was like, oh, shit, is this one of those? You know where Instagram gives you something that was like six yeah. days ago? Yeah. 
And then you're like, what? what the f how did that get in the I Duke posted congrats? yesterday that my birthday came early because we're 19 hours ahead. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I forgot. So I now Australia time, it was yesterday, but LA time, it's now. Uh, March 9th. Yeah. March 10th. Yeah. 10th, I mean. Yeah, March 10th. Do God, that was convoluted. Do you feel 15? Um, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm profoundly grateful for my sobriety. And... I'm also really grateful that we finally are doing this together. Me too, dude. Yeah. yeah. And it's on this. See, this means a lot because sobriety, you change, you grow, you learn. Yeah. And eat this shit. is what we did. You eat shit. <laughs> Some days you eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so so uh, the Netflix special. <laughs> yes. Like, um, it's no secret that Netflix uh, has experienced some turbulence. Yeah. But uh but they've also got hellacious bangers coming out left and right. Yeah, they're still putting it together. I I, I think they're doing a little bit they censored that the Chris Rock special, which I thought was really did you see this? I, I did I not. I saw clips no. of it. They censored it. Well apparently they pulled out the Will Smith thing or something. Wait, what? No. That's the only reason why anybody, anybody watched, watched it. it. I know, isn't that true though? Didn't they do they it's I don't know something. if they said I, I Is that I wrong? I saw it. Like clips of it from Netflix that Me was too. like posted, but, but maybe I just read an article that said something this morning uh, that said that they're going to remove it, maybe or something. I could I be wrong. Highly doubt that. No, but I think it would. Chris, not Netflix. You know what I'm saying? Look at. Let me see. Let's see. I you just have to cut this out. Doubt that. Chris Rock removes Will Smith joke from special. Oh wow! Can they do that after the fact on Netflix? I mean, sure, they can do whatever they want on Netflix. But Chris that... Rock's fumbled Will Smith joke removed from Netflix special. It's every article I can. Which... Chris Rock's Netflix show, the Will Smith joke will be removed. L.A. Times, all this. Uh, fumbled Will Smith joke. Uh, probably he did, didn't he, hit he, as he, well If you watch you the like. original, he does stumble. He fucks up the joke. If you watch the original, he, I don't know what he said. He's he he. Uh, he, concussion. But, 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 when he gets to the word concussion, he like tells a piece of it incorrectly, and he talks about saying it wrong. He's like, "I fucked that up," but then he continues on. Um, but it's only one. It's little a little sliver line. It's one a little tag. sliver. Yeah, it's a little tiny sliver of a thing that. Okay, so because they're not pulling out the. No, 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 no. But they're removing the piece, which is strange because it's like, why'd you put it in the first place? You had Final Cut. You, I watched mine a thousand times. Yeah, I watched it so many times. You hate every single sec. You hate the way your stupid face looks. You know, you're like, look at my teeth. You know, like you start to like pick yourself to shreds. You're like, way to go, you fat dad. Like everything looks sad when you keep watching it. So I, there's no way he didn't see that a hundred times and think about it, which is weird that he put it out because it's like- Well, it was live. Where did so he film he it at? A comedy store? The, no, no. He filmed it at uh, Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, oh. Maryland. Yeah. Um, it's a weird idea though to, because he could have easily cut that out. Do you know what I mean? Like he could have easily. I mean, it was streamed live as it happened, so it would be an after the fact. Yeah, but there's always edit. a delay on those when they do those. Those streams are never live, live. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Never. They can't do that. They know better. Right. Yeah, they're smart. After all these years of all that stuff, that they're like, Ooh, now they're like, there's always a delay. So they could have pieced something together. I just think that, like, I think Chris, as, as, in my opinion, the greatest comedic writer of our generation. He works, man. I think he's. I think he was still f nervous about saying that joke because it hurt him so much. I think that thing hurt him so much. You think it hurt his career? No. Some things hurt and some things don't. You know what hurt me, or at least used to? Overspending on shaving products, man, with the gimmicky razors that light up or vibrate, all this nonsense that nobody needs. And then I started using Harry's. Harry's gives you exactly what you need, nothing more. It's classy, it's got these quality five blade razors, and you can get a Harry's starter kit with everything that you need, and all you're gonna spend is three bucks. Man, this is a $13 value. The five blade razor, the weighted ergonomic handle, the foaming shave gel, and the travel cover. It's a $13 value. You're going to get it for just $3 and free shipping. It's crazy how good this deal is. If you're sick and tired of wasting money on stuff you don't need, then man, join the Harry's movement like I did years ago. Go to harrys.com slash Stevo for this epic deal and do it right now. Harrys.com slash Stevo. Now let's get back to it. No, Not I think it, no, I think it hurt him as a as a human, as a friend, oh, as a yeah. as a fan, as a homie, because they have a relationship, and it's like, dude, each year is one thing. 
<laughs> but hitting me in the face in front of fucking 30 million people is like- 30 million? Come on. Le- that, that, that's that's less more. Well, I mean, I don't even I mean, know. Is, I don't, like live well, how many people watching saw it, that? How many, many saw it live? After? I don't know. I'm saying live, whatever I, yeah, it was. Dude, forget about live. I mean, yeah, imagine, after the fact. But, but within the next 48 hours? But if you hit millions. me in the face in front of, in front of li- like that, I mean, yeah, that would, <laughs> that would do something to you for the rest of the time. It's I mean, the ultimate heckle. Yeah, 100%. Like, imagine somebody heckling you, but then, like, it's the it's biggest. It's a little bit more than a heckle. Yeah, yeah. Well, so it's like, on, on the live stage. That's the ultimate heckle. It's like the. It's like you can't get more. In, well, but also it's assault. At the end well, of the day, it's like, don't yeah. hit. You can't hit me in the fucking face. He should have kept his wife's name out of his fucking mouth. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> um, so funny. So weird. So obviously damaged to do that. So yeah. scary and sad. I, yeah. I'm buddies with Eric Andre. Yeah. Who Same. was with Chris Rock on tour for a while there, I believe while he was putting together his tambourine special. And uh, apparently, after every show, um, Chris Rock had the show recorded. Yeah. And then the guy on the private jet sent the recording to a transcriber who typed it up into a script, sent it back, and he read through the script and like, you know, marked it up and yeah, it's genius. Like every single time. Yeah, my, my my the great writers know how to do that to a way that they are the meticulousness of it. That would I if I watch it over and over, I'd get it would give me anxiety. Like I can listen to it, but reading it and watching it is tough for me. Listening to it's okay because I can it, kind of hear my rhythm better and feel it. My one of my wife's old older old friends, her she was a uh, I don't know how to say it assistant or whatever or like a family helper for carlin for the carlins and wow. uh, for carlin's wife and would say that george would um meticulously write out all his stuff like in his room i don't know if it's on a whiteboard or a wall or paper and he would write it out and he'd recite it almost like it was you know like a script he's memorizing for his fucking bar mitzvah and he would do it for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and he said, you would hear him just like repetitively go oh, the same phrase like a thousand times until he got the rhythm of the phrase that he liked the most. But that's the level of chaos that some of those guys have to, that because their rhythm is so important. I, I wish I could learn that, but it gives me anxiety like thinking about reading my words over and over. Vibrator in the butt over and over and over and over. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that when Steve had, would have me open for him, like I would r- write it out, listen to it and reread it. Cause I hate public speaking and I would black out up there. So I would read it probably 200 times. You would day. do it, yeah. Yeah, it was more of a, like a cruel prank. I was like, hey, you're opening. So I would go up in front of like a 1,500 people. I never done stand-up before, and I'd be like, yeah, I, I can't do that shit. I mean, my, my, my heart rate's 171. It uh, it's been a long time, but but the thing was- Do it that, now in front of 5,000 tonight. Yeah. Buck up, dude. Fuck no, dude. Come on, dude. Get out there. Be a man. <laughs> we, we used to have- um, like, uh, you know, comedy clubs just sort of assign a local comic to be the opener. Right. And it, it just never had anything to do with, it was just felt like disjointed. And, and I remember that when I had started the Bucket List tour, my show started running longer because it's multimedia. I have like video breaks and stuff to like pay off stories. And, um, you know, and then I was going a little longer. I was like, I definitely don't need two openers. And and man, like, why let let this money go to some random? I was like, Scott, you open, take the money, and keep it all like uh, kind of in the ecosystem, right. so that uh, you know. And the the fact that that we met in um, like uh, this sort of recovery scenario for sex addiction is juicy and fun. Yeah, it's very fun, <laughs> very <laughs> juicy, yeah. very fun. Are you sober? Sober? Yeah. All of it, too. Yeah. Yep. You don't do, like, the California sober thing? He just no. turned 10. I, I'm 15 today, and he <clears throat> he's 10 years sober as of nine days ago. Yeah. What was the what was one... My buddy, who's a friend who's working on the film, is sober, and uh, he's been sober for 20 years. And I was like, what's your, what's your you know, what's your little... DOC. Drug, yeah, what's drug your, of what's choice? What's your DOC? Uh, what's yours? I drink a lot. I mean, my drug of choice would be drinking a lot. Yeah. yeah, cocaine. And then towards the end, I would like pile a lot of cocaine in my. Face. What's your What's your now? What's your replacement? What's your now post sober? What's your little thing? Food. Your little naughty boy thing. Food. Is specific though. His is chocolate. So we, no. we'll, we'll go out, and he has to have chocolate, and he's like sad about it because he'll eat so much chocolate. My my thing is not like sugar sweets. Like I'll eat that a little bit. Carbs, pasta. It, but it's like eating enough for two people. 
So like I'll order like seventy dollars worth of sushi and eat the whole thing. When like you see other people eat sushi and they're just like eat like a six. They're like I'll just take one roll. Yeah, and I'm just like that's appetizer, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get that. But do you exercise? I used to. Okay, well. Then I started eating. If you want to eat more. for two, exercise for two. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but that, you can do that's it. Not gonna do yeah, it. well, in my, I turned forty next month, and so like in my head, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna kind of like act out until I turn forty, and then I'm gonna make it all about like my health. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that logic is so shit. That's so funny. Well, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's like. And then I'll go to the doctor. I'll do like. like dude, a, when I get married to my wife, I'll stop fucking dudes. Okay, <laughs> I'll stop. That'll make me straight again. <laughs> yeah, I know it's fucked up. I have like yeah. a weird logic, but you, like that's my. I'll go to the doctor. You know, my blood pressure's already high, so, like, maybe I'll start there, cut out salts, and... I we're the same age. I didn't know we were the same age. I'm 39. Same, dude. I'll be 40 this year as well. Are you doing anything for 40? Yeah, I'll be in Australia on the next Encore tour. Sick. Yeah, this Australia tour is going Huge. So I, dude, well. I watched all your dates online. I was like, holy fuck. And, and, and it's we're like another back. month? Yeah. yeah. Coming back for a whole other month. And thank you, by the way. You're nuts, dude. I know, I really, I really Honestly, you're, you're absurd. I don't know anybody that has your work ethic. It's repulsive. It's like, I feel like I'm drowning in work, and then I see your tours, and I'm like, you're, you're fucking off your head, dude. In a good way, because you care. I will say this, dude. You're, you know, I've seen what you do over the years, and I've only in the last couple of years, like, really gotten to know you and see you, like, for real. And your work ethic is fucking huge. You give a shit. It's good. What you put together is, like, it's just solid I think you've understood more than ever now what you're doing, you know, which is obvious. And, uh, you know, it's not a kiss ass party, but you should be super proud. Cause it's like, it's, yeah, it's good that you figured out exactly how to, how to deliver you in the best way. And well, you did a hundred percent because it's true, man, the show it's fucking great. You're so, you're so who you are. It's unmistakable. You know, like when a comic, finds their voice, whatever that f annoying phrase is. Do you know what I mean? But it's real, but it is a real thing. When mm -hmm. someone finds the thing that, that they do the best, it's so obvious. It's like, oh yeah, what the fuck? What, what, what were you doing before? You know, when, you were, when you're searching, you're fishing, fishing, fishing. And then sometimes you have to step back and be like, what? I was, this is what I was the best at. Why was I even trying other things? It's like, mm -hmm. that's the best version, but it's great. And you're never gonna stop touring now. You're just gonna fucking. You're gonna die on the road. It's like George Carlin. Yeah. You are. Yeah, you're just thank like you him. So dude. much, man. Thank Honestly, you. and you're I in a and you're in a that. bus. Um, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I saw it leaking. <laughs> yeah, well, which grossed me out hard. I was yeah. like, "Fuck, dude, I'm a germaphobe. That would I'd be panic mode." I'm sure that the that the leak holes are all perfectly plugged and that everything is <laughs> it's all restored. patched. I mean. The, the, where that bus came from, it is just rock solid professionals. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we found the only tour bus in Australia, so that's where that yeah. came from. Isn't that funny? That, because this feels like uh, it's no offense to them because I've said this. I love Melbourne. I 100% could move. I mean it when I say I could move. I love this. I've fallen in love with this place. They're behind the times on the things that we need. When you come here, you're like, oh wow, they don't really have a lot of access to the same things that we take for granted. I absolutely think that Scott and I should open up a tour bus company, company yeah. in Australia. I think that the, the need for that is so glaring. Or some, or even a multimedia company here, there's not a ton of them, right? Like I found Stupid Old Studios. Shout out to Stupid Old Studios. I shot uh, my two podcasts there. It's, I found a great studio in town. A friend recommended it. And... Uh, so rad and they're one of the only ones that has like yeah. a full stage studio it's a little too elaborate for podcasts but it's it worked it was what i needed and sh hardcore shout out to them and i was like are you guys the only game in town and they're like well there was like one other one but there's not enough of multimedia yeah. like this here yeah. so they're finding out it's like slowly growing again dude it's like it's like hip hop in Japan. You're like, oh, this is 10 years ago. Yeah. It's almost there. It's like but it's catching there, up. Is there anything in Australia that they're doing that they're doing better than the America right now? Because I find that like paying with the, the tap and pay, if people are just using their watches, people are tapping yeah. it, like it's so efficient. Who doesn't love efficiency and who doesn't love a good deal? Man, the deals are getting better from our sponsors. Mattresses from Helix. That's helixsleep.com slash Stevo. Like, 
now up to $350 off your brand new mattress. And you want to talk about efficiency? When you go to helixsleep.com slash Stevo, it doesn't take two minutes to fill out their quiz to figure out what's actually the perfect mattress for you. Man, I'm so glad that for like three full years now, I have had my Helix mattresses working for me so well, dude. And you need a new mattress. I know it. So get up to $350 off of any mattress and two free pillows if you go to helixsleep.com slash Devo. I just... So grateful for our sponsors being so wonderful to our listeners. So jump on that deal and let's get back to it. No, that's, that's the, the, by the way, that's the whole world. You know that we're the only country that's behind the, <laughs> really? you go to Europe, dude, everyone taps. There's no such thing. Also bring the machine to the table. Great. Yeah. Don't take my credit card to the back, bring it right to my face, tap it. Let's leave. I like it. The efficiency level is so high. It's crazy. I think they do so many more things better than us. Also, uh, metric gun, system fucking and guns they're not killing everybody every five seconds yeah, yeah. you know if, uh, you, you know uh 12 percent of the entire country is has a registered gun 12 percent in america it's like nine hundred and seventy eight thousand guns are are registered it's three times their register and the ones that aren't registered is like seven times that street guns they don't have street street guns don't exist Cry, have you ever watched the news here it's comical they're like <laughs> Uh, today, d drama unfolded as a you know a big banger in a parking lot <laughs> turned out to be fireworks. It, dude, it's it's the most tame, nothing happens shit, and it's so good. It's like the healthiest version of boring, boring life. You're like, it's great. No one gets killed for no reason. Yeah. Kids aren't getting shot. That's the one thing I, you know. Not to be on my little fucking liberal bitch kick, but like, dude, the no the no crazy gun accidents is like, why the fuck can we not figure accidents. that shit out? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I think there are actually relatively few gun accidents in America. Well, no, in the states, dude, the highest, the highest, the highest. A John Stewart just himself. did it. Children, children, the highest killer of children in the United States is bigger than cancer. Uh, it's bigger than um, uh, uh, auto accidents. Yeah, car accidents. It's it's guns. Accidental gun deaths is number one for children dying in America. Accidental, huh? Gun wow. death. Yeah, because, dude, kids shoot themselves with their parents' gun it's in like, their oh, house. Oh, look at my dad's gun. They're fucking Boom. around. Or, or they're in the neighborhood and some kid has a gun and they're goofing around and they're fucking off. Yeah. And it's not deliberate. The highest amount of ch child deaths. Yeah. I'm not trying to get on a f kick, but it's like those, when John Stewart said that, like the facts are so glaring. It's like, what? John Stewart's pretty great. I, I, dude, I watched the G. that whole thing. The guy's the, the G. With, with, the, with the dumbass Republican guy who. Dude, that guy who, was who, so stumped. He, the, he, He's like, these drag queens need to cut it out. <laughs> oh, like, they're like the Mississippi governor or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, was, it was pretty amazing that that guy agreed to be interviewed by Jon Stewart. You know, those guys think, we talked about that on set the other day. I think those guys think that they're going to have a leg up. Like, they're like, dude, I'm prepared. I came with all my notes. This guy's not going to get me. I'm not, a, I'm not some dipshit like the other people he interviews. And then they get there and he's stone-faced cannot yeah. believe he's trapped once again. It's like, you can't, Stuart's going to beat you. <laughs> I would never, he's yeah. going to beat you. Why? Anyway, yes, the no gun thing is kind of chill. I'm shocked that 12% of Australia has registered guns. I, no, 12%, 12 of, of the country's population, 12% is a legally registered gun for hunting activities. Right. So they mm -hmm. register the gun. But uh, that's nothing in comparison. I mean, it's it's wild. That's that that that, that I I would have lost a big bet if yeah. we, if we chose to. Bet well, on keep that. your guns, love your guns, America. Do whatever you want to do. It's kind of nice to not hear like fucking. I'm from Chicago, so like when I read the Tribune every day, it's like the most depressing thing on earth. You're yeah. like, how many more kids are killed for no reason? Like 25 a day. It's in it's, Chicago. The, it's disgusting. Yeah, it's in gross. Chicago alone. Yeah. Um, why are you? So you live in L.A. and you're moving to New York, or are you gonna keep your place in L.A.? I'm gonna keep my spot in L.A. Yeah. I'm just gonna go back and forth a little bit. Why are you moving Bobby to New keeps York? fighting, and he's like, you can't go. You can't go. It's so funny. Like, I'm going to keep my spot in L.A. Like, I wonder, like, if you spend uh, six months in a day in New York, is that more expensive for taxes than six months Same. in a day? Or L.A. and New York, is it's, you're not getting out of taxes. You'd have to move to Nevada or Texas or Tennessee or Washington or Florida. I've looked it up. Florida. Yeah, no, dude, going to New York is not for money. I'm not saving money. If I wanted to leave and save money, I'd get out of California completely because it's a shithole. 
but I'm going to New York because I love New York and I'm sick of not being there. I have so much fun when I am back East. I'm from Chicago. I like the East so much stronger. LA is also, you know, not to dump on it, but it's burnt. I burnt out. I've been there. For, it's pretty gnarly. I burnt out, dude. I've been there since 06 and I'm, it's time to say goodbye for a little yeah. bit. I just, I just wanted something new. I'll tell you exactly why. Truly. When I sit with my dad and his friends and I talk to these guys, the old heads, and I'll hear these great stories about some of his friends. Like, I moved to Memphis for a woman. Then I took a job in Virginia. Then I moved to Jersey. And then I was in Ohio for this thing. And then they tell these, like, great, elaborate, beautiful stories. And look, that's not our life. Our life is more nomadic and strange. But for some reason, we always end up at the same place. We're back in L.A. I'm back in L.A. I'm back in L.A. And I was like, why can't I just go somewhere else for a little while and have that be a new chapter in my life? So because I'm turning 40, I was like, by 40, I want to have a new chapter. So I think yeah. this is just an excuse to like have a new chapter and feel something new. The comedy scene in New York is one of my fucking favorites. Mm -hmm. the, the, the seller treats me so well. I get to go there and do whatever I want. And so I just want something new. I just, I want to, I want to, daddy wants a new pair of shoes. Midlife He's, crisis. We're turning 40, dude. No, you know what I call it? Midlife assessment. I think it's an Ugh. assessment. It's not a crisis. You're just assessing what you need and what you want. You're looking at your life and going, I don't need this anymore. I don't like this thing. I'm not doing that. Fuck that. Yeah. I do like this. I will start doing this more. Like I saw this guy that sends gratitude texts. <laughs> he was like, every morning I send three gratitude texts and I'm trying more and more every day to reach out to people, a couple people a day and just be like, hey man, just thinking of you because I am. Because for you just, you know, you don't. You don't say hi to people as much anymore. You get yeah. too busy. Yeah. You don't focus on any of that shit. So Man, I think I'm about trying. all the time. Like, uh, uh, like oh, dude, it would be good to just reach out to that person and just send them some love. I have that thought, and then it, the thought goes away. Goes away. away. <laughs> well, I'm on a gratitude thread, and it comes up in the morning. I'm just like, fuck, dude. I got to <laughs> fucking respond to these people. <laughs> it sucks. But, like, I love the guys. But, but I'm just it like, sucks. Ugh. But I think the more you do it, the more you realize, like, uh, it's I a, think I think it also takes getting out of your own thing. Like coming here changed my mind about a lot of stuff or like refocusing what I like and what I don't like. I started to really think about a lot of stuff like that. You miss Bobby? When when you, I, uh, do I miss Bobby? Yeah. No, no. Still don't miss Bobby. I don't give a fuck about that guy. That guy sucks. <laughs> no, I love him. I text him all the time. He doesn't, you know, he's a, he's a piece of shit. You know what? Shit. I do believe that uh, I, I just for no reason whatsoever sent Bobby uh, like, hey man, I love you. What did he say back? He says, I love you too. That's nice that he responded. Yeah. He said, I love you too. I'll send you a message like, love you, dude. And Steve just thumbs ups it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not true. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> I was going to say, half the time. 48% like, true. Yeah. No, but, but I, I, I miss, um, I, I miss like my old, old friends. So I, I talk to them as more than I ever have. Like, yeah. like the three homies that I am <clears throat> grew up with, I'll, those guys I talk all the time. They're not in the business. They're just old buddies and... Are those your bu golfing buddies you, you I see you on Instagram sometimes? No, those are guys from back home, back in Chicago. Yeah. These are just like guys I grew up with. My buddy James that I, you know, we'll just call each other to talk like, you know, like two little high school girls and we'll chat for like an hour and a half about life and finances and family and love and bullshit and we'll just chat and chat and chat. Those are like my favorite things, dude. Homies from back in the day. What, what do you think the difference in your career has been because you're kind of blowing up on movies and shit like it was was there like can you trace it back to a, a like a set of like a a mindset where you're like fuck it like uh, i think i think uh i can't point it to one thing i don't know LD how this done. magic words huh? ld ld ld, LD. i think i think if i could point it back to one thing gen if i'm being genuine if i really dissected it um it was it was doing my own thing with the pods and doing shit online because yeah. i you know i was like tv and film I wasn't hot enough or famous enough to get in movies. And I was like, okay, I'll just be as funny as I can in my own little space. And they'll either come along for the ride or I'll just make a living doing it my own thing. And as simple as it sounds, but it did work. I mean, I've been doing Whiskey Ginger for six years now. I don't even know. And I did it because Rogan bullied me into it. He was like, you're really good at potting. You should just make up your own show. And I didn't want to do it. And then he was like, you want to make your own audience or you want to fucking sit and wait for this stupid machine you like to create it for you? So he was right. I mean, he's also anti-TV and film, which he's wrong. I mean, I, I love TV. And, I love doing, I love acting and stuff. I've, I want to make something dope. Uh, so I'll never stop that. But I genuinely believe it was doing the pod and then me getting together with Bobby like reinvigorated a part of our careers that wasn't there before. And then people yeah. see it and they're like, whoa, what the fuck? These guys are, you know. You guys have a solid fan base. Huge, yeah, it's wonderful. I'm, dude, I'm so appreciative of what we created together. We yeah. created a little nugget of psychopaths that love to watch <clears throat> us fight. 
We, we really, truly made that because I said it before. That show was birthed from his relapse. When his dad died and he relapsed, he pulled me aside in the hallway at his old condo and I knew something was wrong. And he was like, told, then he told me that he was high and I knew, I knew something was weird. And he was like, if you tell anybody, I will never talk again. And so immediately I went home and I panicked. Told everybody. Yeah. What am I going to do? I was like, I have yeah. to start telling people. I can't, I can't hide this. This is nuts. But I didn't tell Kalila. And at the time they were together. And, uh, you know, she had reached out to me far after the fact that this all went away. And was like, I'm really sorry he put you in that predicament. I understand why you didn't come to me. Because it was like, what am I going to get in the middle of their relationship? Like, it was, it was really a vulnerable position for me to be in. So I made it my own way to get him to try to get help without having to bring it to the relationship part because Oof. it was really hard, man. Yeah, how long ago was that? Because we talked about it on the last time he was on the podcast. Like my, my Two, brother was on tour with them and he ratted him out. Yeah. And uh, he still hasn't talked to my brother since then. Yeah, well, he's a vindictive dickhead. I mean, he's a fucking dickhead, but, but also, you know, sobriety and addiction makes you do fucking really strange things to people that you love. So I think he's always going through it. But that was in 2019? 2019, okay, 28, no, 20, yeah, 2019. But no. when he told you, like, uh, you know, when don't he told me in the anybody, hallway, he, he's telling the truth. Like, he'll never talk to you again if you fucking tell anybody. Hundred percent. Well, and I knew when his dad died, he was avoiding the, the idea that his dad was dead. It was like he faked it. He like showed up. He, 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 it's like he didn't care. And I was like, this is fake. It's you care, so you're dealing with it in a way that you don't want to communicate. And obviously, it was using behind everybody's back. So once that came to that came to the surface. I knew everything was gonna kind of collapse. So he went away to rehab. And then when we went to Mexico, where I saw you guys, he mm. relapsed again. And then that was, that was, that was kind of like a, um, a window into the world of what it's like to like have one of your best friends really, really struggle with addiction. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I, you know, I've had addicts in my life, my dad, really good friends, but I didn't, I've never seen it like I did with Bobby where, Oof. He'll, 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 he'll put you in a really vulnerable position. Like really vulnerable, dude. It was crazy. Threatened, you know, he threatens you and does all this fucking manipulative bullshit to make you be like. Yeah, well, they're out of their fucking mind, but like you don't really believe it because you're like, dude, it's Bobby. But yeah. like he's really just no different than any other fucking psycho alcoholic that's like saying some weird shit. Yeah, he just didn't. He just never, he, you know. But now he's got such a good grasp that I'm like happy for him that he's functioning again clear-headed and he's found a new level from this, this second term of sobriety but the show was birthed truly because we joked about doing a show i filled in for him when he was having some trouble me and kalila would do tiger belly together mm -hmm. and then we had joked about doing the show and then when he relapsed he pulled me aside when kalila called him out and they sent him away to rehab and he's like i had a realization that like we we should become closer instead of this fringe thing that we're doing and actually do the show together and commit and you know, and you guys don't have guests on. You guys basically no. We, do. just, we had Steve sometimes. On. We have guests on that we know are fun for the show. Yeah, we usually don't want people on the show, but like Steve and there's guys that like we know are fun as fuck that are going to be fun with us on the show. Yeah, you know, so like 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 but the you fact know. that you can do it without a guest is so important. Yeah, it's because the dynamic is me and that fucking weirdo is really what it is. I mean, we yeah. throw in fun people because we like there's personalities that we just know that are great with us. Yeah. Like Brad Williams, he rips every time he's on the show. Absolutely fucking rips. We put him in an elf costume for the Christmas episode. It's one of the funniest episodes we've ever done. <laughs> and there's a joke that went viral because uh, Rudy on the show, the girl on the show, his niece or Kalada's niece was like, are there, is there a dating app for little people? And we all start laughing and, he, and Brad's like, that's a, that's a good question. I was like, it is a good question. And I said, what's the name of it? And, and I was like, wait a minute, let us guess. Let us have a comedy guess at this. And dude, Bobby, the fastest I've ever seen him, he goes, a thumble. And I, I fucking lost my shit. <laughs> I was dying. There's <laughs> moments like that that you're like, yeah, when the dynamic is firing, it's flawless. Yeah. I mean, when it's, when it's fun with me and that idiot, it's fucking fun. It's the most fun I've ever had. It's more fun than any TV show I've shot, any movie I've done, any stand-up set I've ever done. When that kid and I are humming, it's the most fun I've ever had in my entire life. What By were far. some of the other suggestions for for the for the, the little, little person the LP LP dating site? Oh, yeah. we threw out a million of them. They're on the episode. Watch the Christmas episode. But I can't, we went for like five minutes making each other laugh on on bullshit. But it was mm -hmm. just I don't know like those. 
Yeah, dude, when we're humming on that show, I genuinely mean it from the bottom of my heart. I've never had more fun as an adult making comedy. It reminds me of when I was 22 and I started and we would talk shit after bombing at open mics and we'd all be in the parking lot making fun of each other <laughs> for how bad we bombed it. It's the same thing. It, yeah. it felt the same way. It was like innocent and raw and stupid. It was so dumb. It's When me and that kid are talking shit, it's so dumb. It's the dumbest thing on earth. It's great. How does that... Uh whiskey ginger compared to tiger belly we're, in we're, performance the tiger you mean, or bad friends you mean oh yeah sorry bad yeah, yeah, friends. Yeah. yeah yeah oh bad friends is huge dude. we do a way million bigger. downloads a week we're huge that one's way bigger my mm. show's my show's like 400 grand or something like that it's half of it you know um that's still a lot though I it's mean, a lot Jesus. but it's also like you know yeah four to five hundred k but like my, my show i like my show for a totally different reason that I get to connect yeah. with somebody one on one. It's yeah. quiet. It's us in the room and nobody else, which was birthed out of the pandemic. I used to like have an engineer or have someone help, like these wieners and like or this wiener specifically, who's not even looking at us. I love the way you do the fonts different for the guests. Oh yeah, you like that? On, on whiskey. That's ginger, Joe. That's my that, boy Joe. That's Joe Faria does that. My 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 Boston boy. The I, thumbnails, they're great. Yeah, he 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 figured out kind of what works for our our little vibe is like. I like the privacy. It's you and me. That's it. There is no middleman in the room. There's no one else to make you feel a different way. And I sometimes can get some good vulnerability out of guests, which is what I like. You know, some guys don't want to commit, but some, a lot of guys will come in with, oh, you know. When I was on Whiskey Ginger, I, I got very vulnerable. I yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, kind of, it's nice to feel, it's nice to feel people like, some guys are never going to do it. When I have fucking like Don Elon, he's never, he's always going to say, He's going to call me a racist and, you know, he's going to make a bunch of like, you're a white piece of shit jokes, which is fine. I am a white piece of shit, but like, he'll never like get to the other side. Piece but, of shit. Yeah. Piece of shit. Sorry. I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> you're a white piece of shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I love, but I love the show. I mean, I, I want to do it until I can't do it anymore. And Tiger Belly. Bobby's. Right, that uh, him and Kalila is is Tiger Belly and Whiskey Ginger about the same? No, I think they do more than us. They've been around for a long time, and I, I don't know if they're going to continue to do that show. I don't know what all that's what's going on over there, but you know, oh, I don't has know. there been some drama around Tiger Belly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's some crazy Shia going on over there. <laughs> no, but I think they're still do, they're still doing it. They traveled to Hawaii to go do a Hawaiian episode because uh, Bobby's uh, shooting in Hawaii. Hawaii five or no, not Hawaii five zero. I can't think of the name of the show. Magnum PI. Magnum PI. It's crazy that the the bad friends, um, two bears, one cave. Fuck like those guys. Pod, podcasts that don't require a guest. Well, yeah, like it's a, where you've got a dynamic between two personalities that just. Right. The difference between like our show and two bears is that we're funny. And then, <laughs> and those guys are fat. So it's just a, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. fat guys versus funny guys. No, I love those fucking Funny guys, guys fact, always win. You can't even joke around about that anymore because Tom is the, the, like the, first of all, both of those guys are very funny. I'm joking. But also Tom is the skinniest I've ever seen him. Dude, he gets when, handsome I, when I got to Austin, older. it was annoying. He really, there are some yeah. people that get He's way better looking. Well, dude, he fucking. Money, dude. He, Money and time, dude, do a lot. Yeah, but he tours with his like fitness coach now. Yeah, for sure. Why not? And yeah. like that's kind of cool. If you're porky your whole life and then you got money, why wouldn't you want to do what you want to do? I mean, it's like, kind of like when people are like, "Why'd that guy get in shape?" You're like, "Cause he wanted it. Cause it's his life, and he felt like getting healthier." I mean, like, people, yeah, he looks great. People want you to stay Bert size forever. They want Bert to stay Bert size, but is that good for Bert? I, I don't know. That's yeah. up to him. The people with no profile pics want you to stay shitty but the you know it's just people with no profile do people with the egg has the emoji yeah, yeah the fucking the, fi the yeah. filler the like filler avatar loser yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like, bro, you're that an guy. ai bot dude yeah. <laughs> you're russian dude you're russian <laughs> no but i think I, I think uh the getting healthy thing is fucking if that's what dude that's good that you know what that is what tom did that's you getting sober it's like that's what you needed for you to function better yeah. in life and to be the best version of you as a comic and a friend and a husband and a buddy. And so yeah. for him, it's like, he feels like he, he obviously needs it because it's not for any other validation. It's for, I want to feel better, live longer for my kids. Yeah. That's great, dude. Get in shape, do what you need to do. At 39, Tom was probably like at 40, I'm going to start getting better. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Look at Dana White. 
I, I mean, he uh, is like what, like fifty three, fifty four. Yeah. Remember that photo and, of him at the beach with his shirt off, just jacked. Dude, dude? Dana White looks like so much better than he ever did, like twenty years ago. Yeah, you know? like money crazy. and time, baby. Money, money and time. And time. You got to have it, dude. You got to have it, and you got to commit to doing the thing. Like I've been working out at a class here and going to the gym, and it's like. You have to you just have to like balls up and do it. It'd be easier if I had a tra trainers are the best. Yeah. You said that it's been difficult to be in Australia for a month and a half because the schedule of America, the time zone difference requires you to get up at like just some stupid hour in the morning. Like you're getting up at like four in the morning. Yeah, I'll do four or five a.m. if we have like a pitch. We're pitching this show, so it's like if I have to do those, you just have to, and you're miserable. I mean, you're sitting at the computer exhausted, especially if I shot the day before. Because we're doing long shoot days, you know. Like some of them have been nice and short, but some days are full, full days. You know, where you're, you know, you're up at 5 a.m. to take a car to do hair and makeup, to be on set, to shoot till 8 p.m. You get home enough time to like shove food in your face, maybe jerk off, and then you're waking up like, you know, only a couple hours later. It sucks. Mm -hmm. It's And you're waking up in the middle of the night to piss because you're a grown adult male. So it's like at some point your body gets all freaked out you know, and then you have like a crash Sunday where Sunday I disappear into my bed for- when, when do you get home finally? Back in LA? Yeah. I go back April and then we're on the road April 12th. So I, th I think I'm back like the first or second week of April and then I'm on the road pretty much right away. April 12th is my first show of my encore tour of Australia. Mm -hmm. You'll be down here. We start April 12th as well. April 12th I, is our first show. Here? No, 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 no. No, we're not coming here. Oh. We're going to try to come here in another time. <clears throat> but April 12th is our first show, uh, Oklahoma City. That's so funny. We're oh. April 12th is our first show, and our last yeah. one is in July or something. I have no idea. It'll, I feel like... Uh, it'll be in Darwin. Darwin. Do you have any part of you that feels like... I, I've got to hurry up and tour, 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 tour before the world just crumbles around us. And like, <laughs> before and, the thing and, blows up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, like, th I think not for me, but for bad friends, I want to tour bad. But for me, like the, just putting out the special and building shit, I only have a good, an okay chunk of time now. So I'm not in a rush to go tour for me. Yeah. But for bad friends, yeah, I want to tour now bad because- Well, he means when, as long as the opportunity- it's yeah, so hot. like, like uh, I just feel it's like it's gonna be the, there. You created an audience; they're gonna be there. They want, they want to see you. They love you. That's their that 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 idea that it's like go, it's gonna go away. That is a that is a poverty consciousness. That's, yeah, that's a con comedic's poverty consciousness. That is something that we injected into our own psyche, and it's stupid. It's right. not healthy. All right, it's gonna be there. Your fans love you. They cr you you they're not there tonight because of the timing. They're there because they like you and they want to see you. And it didn't matter if it was in seven months or ten months. That's something I learned from the older heads that they're Man, like. I'm bummed that, uh, but, that, that I'm bummed that we're both doing shows in Mullins. I know I would have come by. I would have liked to come by your show. To, yeah, I like, know. I want to come see it too. That's what's even more of a bummer because I'm I working a, out. I have a link to it. If uh, you know, what time do you? What time's your show? Eight, Se seven. Doors eight. are at well eight is the show. Yeah, Don't actually, you have yeah. two shows tonight. Yeah, I'm doing two yeah. two quick little shows. Yeah. yeah, two quickies. I'll give you a link to it, man. Yeah, send it, it to it me for real. The world. It, like the, the the it's like exactly one hour on the the link. Okay, I want to see it. Yeah, it'll be fun because I I'm working out. Like I told them, I'm doing new shit. I said it. I, yeah. The poster says new shit down under. Like I'm just working out a ton of different stuff, and uh, you you know it's like a fun little tight comedy club. Which How is, long are you doing? I'll probably do an hour. I'll you probably just work out for an hour. <laughs> yeah, I got. I have like forty five of like shit new shit that I like, yeah. and then I'll probably do a bunch of interactive stuff because I've never been down here. So I want to talk to some of these fucking people because I've never ever performed down here. Um, it's rad. It's pretty rad. The getting noticed in the streets here is so much different than in the yeah. states because in the states, you know, they see you, they know you. Here, they're like shot almost mad that you're here yeah like i've had yeah. so many guys be like what are you doing here mate why are you here like angry i'm like oh, i'm shooting yeah. a movie and they're like why they're like <laughs> they can't they're like mad you're right. in their town yeah but like it's they can't believe it it's but it's cool i i'm learning that i should have come here a long time ago i fucked yeah. up like i should have been here already but we're here now well you know and i'll come back i will 100 percent come back here 
and do a run of Australia. I don't know if it's going to be as big as yours. How many cities do you do in total in Australia? Oh my God. 22, then coming back and doing like There's only 25. 22 cities in Australia. <laughs> yeah. We're, yeah, uh, well, but, the, but when you say 22, you're counting New Zealand. New Zealand, but then I think the next. Next one is 19. Yeah. But there are three of them or four of them are encore, uh, same city. That's great, dude. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's funny you were saying that about like people are like, what are you doing here? Do you remember yesterday when we were riding the bikes and those two girls were like driving and they pulled over and the one girl pulled over and she's yeah. like, she's like, Dude, I, I'm fucking crazy in the head. Like, is this real? Like, is this really happening? Yeah. And like, I believed her that like, it's so crazy to see you there that she honestly didn't know if that was reality or not. Like she had to like talk about that out loud. Yeah, like, they're stunned. They're like, it doesn't, it yeah. doesn't make a lot of sense. They kind of can't come. They're like, why would you be here in my, the place in that Ballarat. I live? In Ballarat. Yeah. Right. Well, you're also so far away from home. Yeah. It's only like, like 7,000 <laughs> kilometers, <laughs> mate. Yeah, it's, only, it's only, it's only a 16 hour flight. Quick yeah. little puddle jumper. I think, uh, how long have we been going over here? Uh, about an hour three. Eat shit. Eat shit, dude. <laughs> how long have you guys been working together? Uh, not that long. We've, we've got Jeremy over here for uh, a year Six months? Eight years? Do you like him? Year. Do we like this guy? We love we, this we guy. Do. We love he, him. He, he yeah. directs. Stuff for like uh, Discovery, Discovery and Nat Channel, Geo. like wow, like high level, like yeah, he looks like a nerd. I like him. I like him a lot. High level. He's got that cool area. nerd like vibe where he's. How he, many times have you seen the Northern Lights? Well, I lived in Alaska for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you ever seen Northern Lights? No, man. You know what's well? No, I mean I'll lie and say yeah, but I didn't. I was in Iceland and they said I, they could see him, and I was like, I don't think I can see him. So I guess yeah. in Tasmania they have the Southern Lights, right? Yeah. Uh, now Northern Lights, it's where the sky flashes these incredible green colors, and it's called like Areola abolius or a Areola aboralis. Ab uh, aboralis. No wait, why did I just? No, well, it's, it's definitely not Areola. Aurora borealis. <laughs> yeah, the Aurora borealis. Yeah, Aurora yeah. borealis. Right. I, I Areola. Mean, I'm like, you nerd, you knew that. Like, and then apparently like everybody knows that. But dude, they do. <laughs> I've, been, I, I'm, I'm, I've been skunked by the Northern Lights in Norway, Iceland, Alaska, like maybe somewhere else too. I'm going to write a, a, a diss track. <laughs> on Northern Lights? On North, yeah, they fucked me every time. And, and it's going to be called Eat Shy. Eat Shy, Northern Lights. Eat Shy. Eat Shy, Northern Lights. Eat Shy, Northern Lights. Eat Shy. <laughs> What's that song? Isn't that the Grateful Dead? No. Uh, yeah. seen the Northern Lights. What is, uh, isn't that the Grateful Dead? I think it's the. Uh, I don't know. The, the, you know what I'm talking I about? Talking about it's the, a poem the, by the Robert Service. On a Northern Train. <laughs> is, that <what> <laughs> <laughs> is that Casey Jones? No, it's uh, I know you, Ryder. Yeah. Come on, dude. I that can't is think a, of it right now. Have you ever seen the Northern Lights? Keep uh, going. Da, 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 da. That's uh, like Janis Joplin. Uh, a Grateful Dead song about Northern Lights. Come on, dude. We got to get it, dude. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Well, with that, let me uh, Try to... let me tell you, uh, I'm a huge fan of your comedy. Dude. Ditto, dog. I, uh, Ditto. Like, I, 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 if, <laughs> if anybody has not seen Cheeseburger Please on see. Netflix, then and 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 uh, they they did Netflix tell you it performed great? Yeah, we got the numbers. They do like a 13 day and the and then a 23 day or something. I don't even remember. What I mean, it was. for God's sakes, it, like good quality content is going to find an audience, and that cheeseburger special is fantastic. Thank you, I dude. Genuinely, loved thank you, it. man. We did good despite all the odds of Netflix doing zero promotion whatsoever, which I've called them out for, and they'll they'll admit it. They fucking suck. They suck yeah. as for they don't help you do shit unless you're Chris Rock. They ain't pushing you at all. So. I'm glad that we like our fan bases did it, you know, because of stuff like this and our yeah. our mutual fan bases helped grow it organically. So millions of millions of people saw it, which is dope. So without them, dude, they didn't do fucking shit. Netflix didn't do shit. shit. <laughs> they did not. They did literally. <laughs> yeah. No, they literally do nothing. You didn't do shit, Netflix. <laughs> they're like, um, it looks great. And you're like, thanks, man. What do you? What's up? And they're like, that's it. We're gone. Yeah. They disappear, man. It's in the algorithm, baby. Netflix is a. Uh, yeah, they're they're like a really bad dad. They just like you know. Yeah, but I made, I made a lot of money off their stock price last three months. Which did you? That's huge. Wait, dropped, aren't they doing bad? Are they, they went doing? from seven hundred to one eighty. They did bad. <laughs> it went it went from like seven hundred dollars down to one eighty, and I bought it at one eighty, and it, then it jumped up to like three sixty. Hell yeah! But you got to sell for that to mean anything. Never. Yeah, don't yeah. don't don't do. Hold on, dude. To the moon, right? Hoddle. 
Yeah, That's to the moon. Uh, yeah, shit. You still got your board ape NFTs? You got all your NFTs locked up? Uh, I meant to ask you. Yeah. Do people, like, how many people think your actual name is Cheeto? I mean, most people call me Cheeto. <laughs> yeah, like, mo like, I think some people don't know my first name is Andrew. But also, nobody calls me Andrew. People say Santino or yeah. Cheeto. If I, if I hear Andrew, uh, something's up. Yeah, okay. Like, it's like either a family member or... An yeah. assassin. And so everybody, <laughs> if you're not, if you haven't seen Cheeseburger, go on watch Netflix. Watch Cheeseburger Please. on Netflix. It is a fantastic comedy special. And that's coming from a guy who doesn't even particularly enjoy watching stand up. I love you. I, I appreciate that. And also, this is a tip. A lot of times I get people that are in Norway or Sweden or wherever, and they're like, we oh, can't VPN, see it. VPN, v VPN. But also, this is a trick I learned from a dude that, an Aust Austrian dude online, hit me up. If you change your Netflix settings, to American, you don't have to change anything else. You just wow. change it to American, you can change it back. It will show you more American programming. So the fucked up thing is when you're Netflix overseas, it's catering to your local, mm -hmm. you know, um, your, your, wow. your local IP. Mm -hmm. So it will it will automatically kind of that sounds make helpful, it harder to find. That sounds helpful, but no substitute for Nord Nord VPN. VPN. <laughs> Yeah. VPN is the way to go. I think everyone should be using VPNs anyway. But yeah. just change your fucking settings and then you can see it. If you change it to American settings, you you it's I mean, there's are English speaking countries and, and they I, just can't see it. I said Cheeto Santino because that is your Instagram handle. Cheeto, Cheeto Santino. Cheeto Santino. Cheeto Santino the Cheeto and go watch cheeseburger. Eat a cheeseburger while you do it. I had so many people eat cheeseburgers while they were watching really? it. I thought that was rad. Yeah. Who doesn't like a cheeseburger? I want to see people comment on your uh last uh Instagram pick eat shit. Eat shy. Eat shy. Eat shy. Eat shy. Yeah. I want to see a bunch of eat shies under there, please. Yeah. Uh, eat shy. Eat S -H -I -Y. shy. I Y. Shy. And do it shy. twice. <laughs> I'm, I'm writing eat shy on a shirt. If you're not doing it. I'm doing it. I, I, uh, taking it. Yeah, taking can we it. do it and do like a like a pre a pre sale like a uh, like? Why don't a, we just print drop. the text? Why don't we pick print the text and put it on a shirt for yeah. both Ooh, of us? Sick. This is a little skate rat over there. Just did a bitch and ollie. Have you seen the the skate park over there across the street? By the way, in I the have park. Not. You, you honestly go by. There's some. There's a. There is a massive half pipe, and I was like, wow. most most public parks don't have half pipes anymore, just for yeah. insurance. But in America, yeah. they yeah. have little kickers, and you know what I mean. This has a legit huge half pipe, and I was like, holy shit! And well, there were a couple of dudes on it yesterday. We took our we took our boy Isaac to the emergency room yesterday for skateboarding. Yes, is that your crutches? Over there, yeah. What did what did he do? What happened? Uh, he, he ate shy. He, he, you ate shy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he ate shy big time, and now he's gonna have to have knee surgery. Tore your MCL? They think it might be meniscus, but I need Meniscus. Yeah, you're done for, dude. You're fucked. Buddy. How old are you? 25. You'll yeah. be back in a week. <laughs> yeah, easy. <laughs> All right, dude. Anything else we can tell people about? Bad no, Friends no, Tour. No, go see the Bad, Bad Friends, Friends Tour. Pod. Go to badfriendspod.com for all the dates. We're coming to 33 cities. If we're not, if your city's not on the list, it's probably going to be added. So stop freaking out at us online. Yeah, badfriendspod.com uh, for the Bad Friends Tour. Cheeto Santino on, on Instagram. Instagram and Twitter, and keep 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 going to see uh, Steve live so he can learn that his fans are there forever and they're not just going to need him for right now. Oh, so yeah. he has some confidence about it and stops I, feeling I was less concerned about the, their desire for me than just the uh, fiat currency becoming worthless and the world being like. Uh, well, dude, the world ruins. is going to collapse. So just strap in yeah, and have the fun. The world is going to collapse. Yeah, fuck sure. it. We're, We're here. going to make Good epic show. content to help. Yeah, people. That's right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. I love you, man. Thank love you, you, brother. That was rad. Did you, by the way, how did you guys get, did you guys get in touch with them and say we need the conference room and they were cool about it, these people? Yeah, we just showed up and they said, well, we haven't used the conference room since the pandemic. And then we were like, great, so it's uh, available. Be camp tail slate. They've been pretty cool. It's been, it's been so <laughs> weird, though. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? I just want to check in with you guys. I'm now in New Zealand. I, I have not been home for just about an entire month. And... To say that I'm fried would be an understatement. I'm, uh, my whole team, we're out here like, uh, <laughs> we're dying. Uh, excited to get home, that is for sure. And uh, excited about this podcast. It was a long time coming. I know this one's going to do well. I know you guys had to have just enjoyed it. Please do do the thing where you show some love to Mr. Cheeto Santino. I would love it if you guys would post something, tag him, let him know that that you enjoyed it. Maybe tell him to eat shy. That's S-H-I-Y. And, of course, I love you guys. I love you so much. Thank you for sticking around. Yeah, dude.